We're back with Bachelors Michael, candidates, Pink City, District 30, Harlem, New York. As we left off, we was talking about charter schools. Right, and, and I was saying that one of the, we were talking a bit about the, um, perhaps the problem with the upper Manhattan schools over a long period of time. Um, you know, my mother's a teacher and is a U of T member, and she doesn't like when there are teachers there who've been there a long time who perhaps may not be the most motivated right now, um, where she believes that they, and, and others like her believe that there are some that are, um, that some of the young ones are that much more um, innovative, or there's some that maybe this isn't really a calling for them, and perhaps they should do something else. The bottom line is, we should be focused on retaining, getting and retaining the best, most innovative, most uh, motivated teachers that we can for our youth because the need is that much stronger and probably harder to teach young people today than it was when, when we were when we were young. They have that many more distractions and perhaps we, we, we there's something in the training that needs to change, whatever the case is. But uh, what I would say is that uh, if you look, if you want to answer what was wrong, I think part of the, the response is look at what's changed um, in the schools that are turning around. The leadership is trying to address all of the adults in the life of that child. The parent, the teacher, the administrator. So, so the what's guardian. going on in, this can't happen in the public school? It can happen in the public school, actually. I mean, that's Giuliani it, was in office and his, one of his big things were the schools. Right. We had eight years of Giuliani, we had nine years of Bloomberg. His big issue was the schools, mm -hmm. and we're in the same boat. We haven't nothing has changed. So, well, what the, the argument would be that mayoral control had a lot to do with it. Now, wherever you fall on that issue, the argument that the mayor gave, Mayor Bloomberg gave, was that if you have uh, mayoral control of the schools, the mayor himself or herself is is actually held accountable for what happens in the school and has direct responsibility um, for the administration of the school versus a board of, elect, of, um, of education, which is what the, what the old system was. And this even, and there was a system even before that, because remember we had the community <laughs> control of schools with, after Ocean Hill Brownsville. Uh -huh. And that was seen at that time to be innovative and necessary. If you go back, actually, charter schools are not a particularly new idea. No, the Black Panthers used to talk about street academies. They were magnet schools as well. And even though there were a lot of charter schools run by what my opponent would say are outsiders, they're, 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 actually run, they're actually a lot of ministers that want to start a charter school as well. It's about community control of the school. And I think when you can go in and do something really innovative, and actually rework what's going on in the classroom. What about what, what's called the business of charter schools, that people are making a lot of money mm. on the back of charter schools? I, I think that's a false argument because... Even Moskowitz, former city council. Well, remember, school. these are all nonprofits. profits the majority of them. There are some for-profit charter schools and organizations that run charter schools, but the vast majority of them are nonprofits. They're essentially, what's essentially happening is that a nonprofit has taken control of both part, part of the funding as well as the administration of the school. So with respect to uh, oversight and transparency, there's transparency in the school because the Department of Ed is responsible for what happens in that school. There's transparency with the nonprofit that runs it because both the Department of Ed has a, set, has a look at what's going on there, but also that nonprofit is governed by the laws of the state of New York. Well, someone, like I said, uh, former city council person, Eva Moskowitz, mm -hmm. who's making over four hundred thousand uh, dollars running charter schools, had a real good connection with Chancellor Joe Klein. Mm -hmm. Four hundred thousand. This is this is business. Well, I think to be honest with you, uh, she, from what I understand, and I don't know her particularly well, mm -hmm. but what I do know is that she runs a nonprofit organization that manages several schools, not just the one. Um, and I would imagine that anyone that donates money to the nonprofit to be able to run the school, um, she probably is an executive director of that and the board has say over how much she makes and if she wasn't doing a job, she wouldn't be making that money or she, they would be finding somebody else. But I'd take it back and say, if there is another nonprofit that was created by ministers in our neighborhood 
and they any particular executive director running that nonprofit that ran schools was making the same amount of money I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with that if the school is teaching kids and the kids are achieving well are the standards to say for the charter schools and the public school I think that the standards in terms of the the testing is the same in other words there is a there is a they're taking the same tests and so there is a record of achievement um, that the charters have that may be slightly higher than what the traditional public schools have I will say that when the state regents recently raised the uh, the standard raised the test standard in other words made the test harder that everybody did poorly everybody did worse the charters still did a little better than the traditional public schools, but everybody did worse, which means that we still have a long way to go. And I will say that you know my, my opponent speaks often about um, hedge fund folks, Wall Street folks that are very involved in these charter schools, and it's outsiders really taking control of, of what, how, how, how our kids are educated. But let me say this. The majority of those, quote, Wall Street folks that have supported my campaign also gave money to Obama because of the Ed Reform uh, uh, stance that he's taken, race to the top, for example. My opponent voted twice against it before he voted for it. Um, a classic flip-flop, I might add, and that, <laughs> is, that, that, that came to pass. That John Kerry but, is that Right, <laughs> um, because, I'm in, because I was in the race. Okay. And, um, and frankly, the people that supported Obama chose to support me and not him. This is something, race to the top and the support for uh, education choice is something the current mayor, uh, supports the so, government. The governor supports the incoming, the, the alleged uh, supposed incoming governor Andrew Cuomo uh, supports. The president supports. Former President Clinton supports it. So there was a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, support for this education choice. So it's a little um, uh, disconcerting that my my opponent um, is really nowhere on this issue. It takes such a such an opposing. One of my questions. Bear in mind. Our children need all the help we can, they can get. Let's not make sure. There's no doubt about that. They need all the help that they can get. But what do you say to the people? That say, there's money being taken out of the school budget to fund charter schools, but charter schools only take about 30,000, 40,000 children, as opposed to the 1.1 million that's in public schools. Well, charters actually get less city dollars per pupil than traditional public schools because the theory is that the nonprofits that oversee them would actually supplement the the, the lower per, per pupil contribution. So they actually are getting less per pupil, let's say 75 cents on the dollar compared to the traditional public schools. Now, we also have to remember that charter schools educate a small percentage of children. Even in upper Manhattan, charter and which has the greatest concentration of charter schools than any other neighborhood in the city, it's still only about 15% of the total student body population, and even less citywide. If you get an office, will you work with UFT, UFT to come together and say, well, guess what? Let's take this on a whole new level to make it better. I have to. Because the, because, uh, I spoke to someone, one of the teachers in the schools, and they were really upset with what you don't hear about from the people from the Board of Ed, mm -hmm. the topic. So what I would ask from you is, like I said, can we come together? I have to. As a practical matter, because traditional schools teach uh, and educate 85 to 90 percent of the kids in this district, I have to work with them mostly because that, as just a practical matter, why would I ignore them? My mother's a U of T member, and her uh, union wages and benefits helped me become the person that I am. I studied labor relations in college. There's no way that I would ignore the needs of the unions that has, have really brought people into the middle class in this city and in this country. Although, I will say that my priority is getting these children educated. Okay. We hope the percentages will go up. Well, we're going to close out this section. We're going to come back and we're going to uh, start up something different.